Back in studio, Joe Musso and Emery Hunt. Emery, this was about as teach tape as it gets for Green Bay. Looked like they had a game plan. Looked like they expertly executed said game plan. What stood out to you about the effort here, offensively specific from Green Bay? Well, they were playing a physical game. We saw them physically run the football down the hill, downhill against the Miami Dolphins defense. We also saw them just physically break tackles. That was a common theme tonight uh, for this Packers team. Now, you can look at it both ways where the Dolphins missed a lot of tackles. We'll talk to, about that in a second. But the fact that they got a lot of guys involved running the football, the balance was there, run pass. The attempts in the run game was there. Maybe not the gaudy rushing numbers, but the fact that they stuck with the run game. They set the, the tone. They set you know, the, uh, the mentality and how they want to run the football and dominate this team because they knew Miami allowed the fact that they were playing a game in the cold affect them. Green mm -hmm. Bay knew that and just tested their physicality to see if they're going to let those mental mistakes become physical ones, and he did. The NFC North this season, the first team in NFL history to have three teams with nine or more wins before the end of Thanksgiving mm. Day. It's been dominant stuff there, and when you look at the greater picture in the NFC, the through line right now is run game. For as flashy as the Lions can be in that pass game, it starts with a run. Green Bay seems like they're finding their stride. Not that they struggled early on, but this run game, extremely effective these last few weeks behind Josh Jacobs, who surpasses the 1,000-yard mark on the season now. How real does this make their, not just playoff hopes, but contention hopes to have this sort of run game? It makes it very real because you have to be able to run the football into the deep into the postseason because that's how you control the game that's how you control the tempo that's how you can kind of wear down your opponent and if you can't run the football we saw that what that looks like tonight on the opposite side mm -hmm. Miami couldn't run the football so you can't really say man they can go anywhere and kind of win any kind of way I think that's the difference between Green Bay uh, in Miami and what we saw tonight was what we kind of saw last year them being able to run the football they went out and continued to get a good running back in Josh Jacobs they had to replace Aaron Jones but you saw the depth in the backfield multiple guys getting involved so you're trying to establish your depth running the ball because you're going to need those guys come postseason time. You say that physicality and depth is the difference between Green Bay and Miami. I'd say the forecast as well. <laughs> Much was made about Miami's handling of these frigid temperatures. Again, we get a data point in that loss column. This team unable to find themselves. Did you see this as an issue with the cold or did you see the cold just magnifying the greater issues that they've had all season long? Yes, for both. Because I felt like when you already allow yourself to think that it's cold outside, you will be cold and you will start to play a little tight, a little tense. And also, when you look at how they try to attack this team, they tried to run the football, but they didn't want to run the football. 46 pass attempts by Tua Tagovailoa, and yes, the game script kind of got away from them. Yeah, but second even half. When, yeah, in the second half, but when in the first half, they barely ran the football. They, they allowed themselves to be physically dominated. You saw uh, Green Bay set a physical edge in the running game, so they couldn't get outside in their run, in their run game. Mm -hmm. They also had no plan to run inside. That's where you kind of could set the tone then. And you saw them just having, not having a physical identity. I think that's where Miami has to find a way to get better. We talked about this watching the game, Joe. The greatest show on turf, the Rams, the St. Louis Rams in 99. They could, you know, you know all the flashy plays, Kurt Warner and Oz Akeem, all these guys, Torrey Holt, Isaac Bruce, but it was all about Marshall Falk. He was an X Factor. They ran the football downhill, and then they hit you with all the splash plays over the top. So you can't have this type of finesse thing, even if you want to go to the San Francisco 49ers with uh, Bill Walsh. You had Jerry Rice, all these passing uh, you know, weapons, but you also had Roger Craig, Tom Rathman running downhill. That's where you have to really set the foundation. This is why teams that tend to go deep into the playoffs can run the ball. Even if you just want to go back to last year's Miami Dolphins. <laughs> right. All the flash, the dash, the pass. It was very interesting, but it started with Raheem Mostert, Devon Achan, and that run game seems to be absent or at least eluding them this season. Now two games under 500 for Miami as they give chase to that all-coveted seven seed, but it gets harder from here. Emory Hunt, thank you as always. As we wrap up the Thanksgiving offering between these two, physical dominance and maybe dominated by the forecast as well. Tua, his coldest games of his career. And now, as a young man who grew up excited when the snow started falling in Chicago, like, like 46 ain't cold. I'm about to say, is, is that really cold? Well, they lose this one against the Broncos once again. 27, your game time temp. Got to figure it out because if you are going to chase down that seven seed, you're going somewhere cold to play playoff football.